Yo, we have the one and only financial strategist, my dog Wolf, in the building tonight. Twitter's trying to remove the block button. Elon, what the fuck you doing? Tyler Perry did not actually buy BET. Yo, it's your boy DJ Aaron Michael, baby. Welcome to the Queued Up Podcast. Let's go! Woo! Nice. Here we go. Up. Yes, sir, baby. Let's the energy go. is palpable tonight. We in here. We it in is here. episode 31. You already know who the squad is. I am your boy DJ Aaron Michael. You guys are now locked into the Queued Up, up Podcast, baby. Got a right design. Yes, yeah. Sir. Good job. We're back About on the winning streak. How, How you doing? <laughs> it was good, everybody. Uh, thank y'all for being here, man. Last week was a, was a doozy. It was a great episode. The week before that, even more of a doozy. Actually, episode 29 was our second highest viewed video ever since our yeah. first video ever. So it was, yeah. round of applause for that. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Some people fall off and they never get back up. But God damn it, we try. But don't check the numbers on the last episode. Unless you want to go help us out and watch <laughs> that too. Um, yes, go check then. We have a great episode for you guys tonight, man. Uh, before we get to you, you wait. All right, you hold on, sir. All right, yeah. hold, <laughs> on. See, see, hold on. In the corner. No, I hold concert. on. All right, there, there you go. <laughs> 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 now, before we talk to our special guest in the building, it's really lucky to have my guy. Uh, we're going to be also talking about uh, Elon. Okay, Wolf, you don't really have to look in the corner. Okay, <laughs> he was thinking. He was thinking. I know he was thinking really hard. Elon's <laughs> tripping on X or Twitter. I still call it Twitter. Fuck you, Elon. Um, oh, now it's fuck you, Elon. Oh yeah, you was the you turned the corner. That was your uncle two weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, that. I mean, Joe. that's still Uncle, Uncle Eve. You know what I'm Fuck an Uncle. All right. You ain't got to like him, but I still love him. I feel right? that. That's Especially true. if he gives me a Billy. <laughs> you love him? He can give me a Billy. You, you love him? He can give me a Billy. Would you Uncle let him kiss Eli. you? Uncle E. Would you, you share a drink with Elon Musk? Like, drink it from the same spot he drank off? Yes. Uh. <laughs> that's the most specific thing ever. That's like, would you share toilet paper with him or something? I don't know. Uh, Sharing toilet paper <laughs> is great. Twitter and or X is trying to remove the block button from use, which is I think it's un- I think it's illegal. Actually, you can't le- legally do that for an app on the store. But we'll talk about that. We'll get into that. Um, another round of hot cues as well. Uh, Sugar Sean O'Malley from the Zone from Phoenix yep. wins yep. the belt, the bantamweight belt in the UFC. We're gonna talk about him. Champ. Bootleg Kev has ESTG walk out on him. Um, and then we have a new sub-segment called Disappointing Moments in Black History. Oh, Tyler shit. Yeah, I know. We had, we had great moments in Black we History. We had a great moment. Yeah, shout out to the whole squad in the building, by the way. Shout out to my boy Chewy Jesus Christ uh-huh. behind the board. Shout out to my boy Gibby, a.k.a. Gibby Visions with the camera. You already know I got my squad, my brother RC. Yeah. Production. Yes, sir. Artie Reeks in the building. Let's go, friend. That's 623 to the full know, There you go. Oh. Everybody's been watching us. You know, you repping the merch. I see mm-hmm. you, bro. Looking, looking good, man. Looking Appreciate good, it, man. Yes, sir. Right. Hey, yes, sir. shout out to my boy also, real quick. Apologize later. Apologize Local Phoenix later. brand. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Gave me some stuff to wear, so I'm repping it. Yo, find them on Instagram. Check them out, man. They make really, really dope clothing and stuff like that. My boy Dre, Julie, and all them. Shout out. Much love to you guys. Um, so now we're gonna get into episode thirty one, man. We have to get this shit going. I'm gonna let Artie introduce who our special guest is because you know it's you, only you, right. You guys have been friends. It's only right. Friends, guys are friends, and friends. friends. We're like brothers. We're, we're brothers. We're brethren now. I mean, right. Artie is half white, so I get it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Not even gonna argue that. But go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Artie. I'll, hey, I'm, man, gonna, I'm gonna give you the hand. I'm gonna give get you the, the reins. Get the get the bombs ready, Chewy. Uh-oh. You need the bombs ready. All right, All right. over here on the left hand side. My left hand side. Right. We got Mr. Make Your Annual in a Month. Mm. We got Mr. Sell Salt to a Slug. Talk to him. He could sell a hug to a thug. Okay. (laughs) This is my guy right here. He's like family. Hit it one more time. Yes, sir. Wolf. Ow. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome, guys. welcome, welcome. Everybody on, on the audience is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> the the audience, we audience. have a live audience in the audience. building. Here. People <laughs> didn't know that. If we did have a studio, that'd, that'd be, be that would be ridiculous. You do have a studio. There's there's about you know 200 people already. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's just like like the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. You know, and you literally walk off the set into yeah, the exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 No, yeah. um, Thanks no. for the introduction, Artie. Of course, there brother. You go, man. Yeah, he's a good man. He's he's really a good guy. All right, I'm just being honest. I've worked with this man for years. Mm-hmm. Um, just keeping it real, I can you can tell he's a family oriented person. He's a great nice. big brother. He's an amazing son. He is a person that 
I've seen him do business for clients. So his clients, if y'all are watching this, I've seen the time and effort he puts in behind the scenes to make sure he gets y'all plans right. I've seen it all, baby. I'm just letting y'all know. And I right. think I was going to credit it. I know. I, <laughs> I'm yeah. going to cry. I ain't never I'm heard him give more real. than one compliment man, to another no, grown thank man you. before. Okay. I love you, bro. I appreciate <laughs> it, man. Yeah, that's, man. That's love, man. See, Seriously. Man showing love. See, man, but this is a brotherhood over here, brotherhood. man. You know, we, 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 you, you leave all your cool shit at the door, okay? You walk in here, you show love and appreciation to each other. Yeah, 100%, do. man. 100%. 100%. So, I'm super happy to be here. Super delighted. I'm uh Dude, I've been laughing my ass off uh, watching your guys' uh, episodes and stuff. So nice. just, yeah. I've been begging him to like bring him in. I know, so I, I know. I kind of just oh, like, you know, go. I was like, like, invited like... myself. So I'm, I just appreciate <laughs> you guys for, you know. Well, the time <laughs> was right, man. And also yeah. your influence on social media with what you do, your your journey of your weight loss and how you went, you know, from from where you started up, where it's hard. It's hard for a lot of people now how you built yourself into you're a buff guy. You're a built guy. You're so a buff guy. guy. Like, exactly. and all, all due respect, of course, because I'm trying I to appreciate be like that, you. Bro. We also got the panza over there. <laughs> 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 no, you look good, bro. I'm trying, man. You know, thank you, bro. Um, but now the fact that you have almost 30,000 followers on Instagram, all natural, bro. Ain't, ain't no bots in there. You hustling your shit. Talking Thanks, about bro. financial strategies to a younger demographic and a younger generation that last week we literally talked about why Gen Zers aren't even saving money. And they rather burn it all rather than even care about retirement and shit like that. And you're probably somebody that would slap somebody in the face if you ever heard that. You know what I'm saying? Like, save yeah. your fucking money. So go ahead and take a little bit of time and kind of introduce who you are and how you started with, you know, finances and, like, what what are some of your goals? Yeah. No, I appreciate that, man. So uh, my name is Wolf Trigo. Like like they said, uh, I, I've been in the finance industry for now almost a decade. And it is, it is crazy to say because I can almost remember – <laughs> like it was yesterday mm -hmm. when he, you know, when I actually, I hit him up mm -hmm. to have him recruit me. Yeah. Wow. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. Wow. That was like, the easiest recruit <laughs> ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's funny because I started selling life insurance at a, at a company that all they specialized in was uh, final expense and, you know, like the typical like funeral services and stuff. So right. finances and, and financial freedom wasn't really like the the specific topic behind their product their their product was more geared towards peace of mind when you pass away yeah. right. and you know fast forward three years later i ended up exiting from there and that's when i found uh, like i found out about aj's business at the time and it's kind of funny because me and aj didn't really have a good relationship when we first met at <laughs> the first company at the practice company mm. um but i don't know it's just I, I don't even remember how we actually became close. I, I think I think what it was was when we just started working together, I think we both knew like maybe our personalities weren't weren't like the perfect mesh, <laughs> but like we had the same goal and yeah. and honestly, I think at the core of it we both knew like to us the client was most important, so we just were like trying to always figure out better ways to like serve a client. I think that mm -hmm. that was like the core of how we built. Yeah our relationship especially because i remember sorry i interrupted you, but oh you, you know i was gonna say real quick it's just funny how i feel like a lot of dudes stories before they become bros like they yeah don't really like yeah, each other. yeah. Like me and rc were like that's me true. and rc weren't really the closest when we first met <laughs> that's true. and then just a couple of circumstances happened and then we became brothers and that's yeah. just what the fuck oh, happened, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah yeah i love the, that the, yeah i know i love aj and it's, it's funny enough like he's the one that set up my mom's retirement yeah oh wow, wow. like oh. and dude I, I don't trust people with 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 especially my family. Right. So the fact that I was like, you know what, like I could have done it myself. Yeah. You know, but but I was like, you know, I I trust AJ. I trust him like my brother. So, you know, as a you know, as a token of love, it's like, yeah, you can nice. take care of my mom, bro, because like yeah. I, I know, I know you won't fuck up because if you do fuck yeah, up, yeah. I'm coming after you. <laughs> yeah, and I, and and you know what? And trust. and I and I took that as like a big to me, that's a big leap of faith on mm -hmm. his end, and so I really took my time and did my due diligence. And she's very sure. satisfied with it, with yeah. it to this day. Nice, very, very satisfied. Awesome. So, but yeah, so that's how we met, and then from there, I decided. I actually had a client of mine, uh, one of my first ever clients, one of my biggest ones at the time. He called me because that I had a transitionary period to mm -hmm. what I do now. I don't just do life insurance anymore. It's more of like infinite banking, financial strategies, like. More about accumulating wealth, leverage your wealth, and preserve it for the future. Right. And how I transitioned to that is because I had a client of mine who was like, "Hey, have you read the book? What would the Rockefellers do?" I was like, "No, I haven't read it, but you know, I'd be open to it." He's like, he gave it to me, 
And then a couple of days later that he uh, he calls me again. He's like, hey, have you read it? He's like, no, I haven't had the chance yet. All right. Mm-hmm. He's like, okay, well, the reason why I ask you to read, to read that book is because there's something called infinite banking. Mm-hmm. And he told me, he's like, yeah, you can borrow the money while at the same time capturing the interest. And at the time I was like, no way. That's mm-hmm. a scam. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's all like just smoke and mirrors. It doesn't exist, right? You can't be, you can't do that. Cause like it's, it, the money's in the policy. When you pull it out, it just, you just pull it out. Right. Yeah. I didn't understand it at the time. And he's like, Wolf, I'm not your client for you to tell me what we can do. So go figure out how we can do it. And hung <laughs> hey, up. Wow. That's Damn. hard. That's yeah. one of the moments where you sitting there like, shit. Hey, right. Jesus, Jesus Enriquez. Thank you. That was your drop the the moment, just yes. Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> And yeah, from there, I just, I, I, I literally became obsessed. I became, because again, it was, he was my biggest client at the time. I couldn't afford him canceling the policy and getting a charge back. So I was like, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> I was like, fuck, I got to figure this shit out. And yeah, for the, for the next like six years, pretty much up, up until this point, I become the most obsessed person when it comes to infinite banking. Mm. And I'm even... I'm even going to say that I'm probably one of the best to ever do it just because I have been so meticulous about the process. Mm -hmm. I read every book. I've talked to every single authority figure in the space. I have the RVPs, the regional vice presidents of some insurance companies' phone numbers on speed dial that they answer whenever I call if it's late at night. It's true. Yeah, it's a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> no, no. Hey, I believe we. I believe you, bro. You know what nah, I mean? Yeah, no. Nah. So it's it's interesting because I think I think um, and I and I want to say this just from, the, it's an industry where I think there is a lot of there's a lot of BSers in the industry, mm-hmm. but like he really knows his shit, and I really see him like you. We'll see him on a Zoom call with a freaking like RS. What was it? The RVP. 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 RVP of like a huge company. And this these are dudes who they ain't got time for you know what I'm saying? Right. They ain't got time to play around and they're making real money. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, those, those are the guys that will say, like, oh, you want to talk about this? Just contact my one of my internal wholesalers. Like I don't right. got time for you. Exactly. You know? And and he's really sitting there and he's picking these things apart and trying to find better ways to serve people. I think that that's And yeah. the key to it, the key to it comes. Uh, specifically for infinite banking, and I've said this many, many times, and the reason why a lot of the insurance agents hate me now, especially even in, in, in our own company, is because I call them out. The only way that infinite banking works is if the agent cuts his commission by 70 to 90%. Wow. Mm. wow. So think about it, bro. If you have the option, it's like, damn, like I could make 10K on this client. Yeah. But if I really want to make sure that I take care, I take care of them. Mm-hmm. I gotta cut that by seventy to ninety percent. Yeah. So, that's a huge cut, bro. Ten down to uh, just a rack. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. But good business, though. Yeah, it's business, the business. Space. good business. Yeah, but also you, there's a lot of scumbags uh-huh. in any industry. Right, right. Here. Yeah. So especially when it comes to finances and getting over, because look, I'm a, I'm an average consumer at the very fucking least. I don't know shit. <laughs> I don't know. You could tell me this yeah. is an ant from an elephant when it comes to anything financial. I'm just going to take your word for it. And then probably I'm the one of the suckers that gets scammed. That's most people, so, man. Yeah. It's, it's, it's funny because throughout this throughout my entire career, I have done everything I can to be able to attract the right partnerships, the right uh, friends, the right business uh, associates to be able to build this. Because my goal is, okay, most people think when they think about life insurance, they think about a scam. They think about the typical uh, old white guy with a suit that's going to try to sell them as much life insurance as possible. <laughs> right? It's like that, that's what they think about life yeah. insurance. Yeah. So I wanted to break the stigma. That's why it, That's why I do the things that I do. That's why I don't look like the typical life insurance guy. That's why I'm, I'm on side missions all the time. Yes. You know, <laughs> I, I was doing bachata dancing. Then now I'm doing jiu-jitsu. So, so I'm, I'm doing a lot of different things to kind of show people it's like, Look, man, life insurance is fun, and it can actually be used as a wealth accumulation tool. And throughout this entire process, throughout my, my entire career, I have met so many people that say, "Yeah, dude, let's let's join forces." Yeah. And then when they find out about how much commission I make, they're like, "Okay, yeah, let me think about it." And then a couple uh-huh. months later, comes down, and, and I find them that they're doing life insurance. They got their license through another broker wow. that pays them more commission. And then their clients who also are mutual friends of mine come to me like, Hey, by the way, uh, can you review my policy that this guy set up? Wow. And then I look at it 
and is one of the most horrendous, scariest things I've ever looked at <laughs> in my entire life. Yeah. How do you how do you deliver that to somebody? Like, hey, I looked over this thing. I'm like a, a third party. This guy's kind of doing you dirty. That's like That's a, a good tricky question. conversation. To it bring is. Up, it right? is. You know, I think. I think truth always matters more, right? Mm -hmm. So the way that I present it is like, look, um, you can take my word for it or you can let me explain, mm -hmm. right? It's like I would love to dive in, dive deep into it and educate you on how these policies work. Yeah. Sometimes people kind of get uh, um, information overload, so sometimes they, they will just take my word for it, but I love to educate people. That's why I make all the videos that I make. But pretty much the way that a conversation goes is like, hey, I ask them questions, right? Because I don't want to assume. Right? right, so I nice. I always ask us like, hey, let me ask you a question. Why is your death benefit this? The number one red flag that I would tell people: if you're getting a life insurance policy for infinite banking and for arbitrage purposes, talk to them. The death, <laughs> <laughs> the death benefit cannot be a specific number. Meaning, your death benefit mm. can't look like half a million dollars, a million dollars, eight hundred thousand, two hundred fifty thousand. In mm -hmm. order for the policy to be Special. maximized yeah. to the best optimal way for your cash flow, the death benefit has to be a random number because it's the smallest number that the IRS will allow you to get or pay for mm. to be able to put as much money in there. Yeah. Mm. So it's, it's yeah. Is so that like a deductible thing or what, what do you mean the, the smallest So for example, uh, I just got a policy um, putting about $100,000 a year into it. Okay? Mm, okay. So under IRS guidelines, the smallest amount of coverage that I can buy is about 2.4 million and some change, right? Again, it's a number. Mm -hmm. It's a random number that I didn't choose. I literally gotcha. just selected the option minimum death benefit. Gotcha. The reason why you do that is because obviously the more death benefit, the more cost. Right. The more mm -hmm. cost, less cash flow for you, less cash value, more commission for the agent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You with yeah. me on that? Yeah. 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 So that. that's why they always ask that question. It's like, okay, so why is your death benefit this? Did you request it? And then they tell me, no, I just told them that all I could do was like a couple hundred bucks a month. Mm. I'm like, okay. Mm. So if all you could do is a couple hundred dollars a month, you shouldn't have half a million dollars in death benefit. Yeah. That's way too expensive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For a couple hundred dollars, I have a client right now. Uh, he's been my client for the longest time. Esteban, if you're watching, I'm proud of you, bro. Um, <laughs> bro. He's been my client for a long time. And... His policy is around that size. You know, it, it was it was a small policy, nothing crazy. Um, but yeah, it, it, his his death benefit is under three hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And yeah. Because his max funded amount, the amount, the most amount of money that he can put in there is around three thousand dollars a year or something like that, around like two hundred and thirty five dollars okay. a month. So, so I think <clears throat> basically, like what you're saying is, if they have a number that's like a squared off number, like 300,000, it means that they didn't actually go through the process to find out what the actual uh, death benefit should be. It's yes. like they just, they're throwing a number out there and they're probably going more for like, they're trying to make their money. They're trying to make exactly. a good commission opposed to doing what's best for exactly. the client. When I hear that, I hear they basically bought the car by walking into the dealership saying, I can afford $300 a month That's it. instead of saying, I want to pay $20,000 for this car. That's it. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Not only just $20,000 for this car, but I want to I want to make sure that my interest rate is yep. only 2%, for yep. example, or 3%. Because exactly. if you right? tell them this is the payment I can do, then we could just stuff whatever yeah. on the back end to get you to exactly. that Exactly. Bradley yeah. talks about this. I think Andy Elliott talks about this too. Grant Cardone, they say, like, if you walk into, or like, it, it, when they used to do car sales, they, they, used to, they used to always say, yeah, if you walk into my car dealership and you say, all I can afford is $500 a month, uh -huh. I am selling you like everything yeah. on it because I can be like 120 months. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? And the exactly. car be worth like the car be worth maybe like 20 grand, but now mm -hmm. you're paying like 40,000 for it. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they'll do it like they're doing you a deal and we got you down to 450 a month. We're right, paying. right. We're going to wash the <laughs> yeah, car like, yeah. with like a 29% yeah. interest uh, rate, you know? See, so man. yeah, so when you explained it like mm. that way that yep. totally makes sense yeah. huh. instead of doing the process the other way 100%. to figure out what that like you said random number would 100 be. 100%, man. Yeah. Hold on real quick. Should we hit the horn? right now yo we are dropping gems for y'all okay these yeah. are some financial gurus <laughs> yeah. because uh, some people might not know rc used to work in the car industry i was in you, finance you, oh you, shit yeah. i was literally a finance manager at you know your chevrolet yep you know you say you yeah. so there you go so wolf let me ask you bro so what is like the number one issue when you try to talk to because i know Artie for the longest time he used to talk to me about life insurance and people like around like our culture you know what i'm saying like young 
African American man that are only really worried about now. Like people are worried about now. Let me get his house. Let me do this. Let me do that. Because we're starting to get late twenties, early thirties, and type shit. What is like your biggest hurdle when trying to talk to your friends or people around like mid twenties, early thirties, maybe even early like forties as well? About yo, start thinking about this now. Like, like what's like the biggest issue with that? Well, before I get into that, let me ask you guys a question. Do you guys have life insurance? Life, no. Mm. Nope. Nope. Oh, mm. I, uh, mm. You about you to close like one of those like, like close on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love life. <laughs> I love life. <laughs> but <laughs> okay, look, look. So all jokes aside, please get covered. Uh, Even if it's not through him or me, like just go find someone that will get you some good coverage. Yeah. Reason I say that is there's there's two different ways that you can get coverage. If if you want to be able to hold on to as much cash like liquid mm -hmm. as you can, and you don't want to invest into life insurance you can get a term policy for very cheap right like for example you can get a million dollar policy for maybe like 80 bucks 80 100 bucks a month right and that's a million dollars of coverage for the, the next 30 years right Sorry. one of the one of the downsides of that is that you're renting life insurance right yes. it's not building any equity yeah okay? so the, th the biggest thing that i always try to drive the point is think about it this way they always say that Owning your assets is probably one of the best things that you can do. And the reason for that is because it builds equity mm -hmm. and that you have full ownership of it, mm -hmm. right? So it's not like you're just like spending money into something that you're just gonna have to let go. So for example, are you guys like renting or owning a house right Owning, now? yeah. You own a house. Yeah. Why did you choose to own the house? I mean, a ton of different reasons, but basically like what you said, when you look at, you're gonna either pay two grand in rent or 2,400 and a mortgage that's going to build equity exactly. that ultimately you can why is equity leverage. important for you uh again uh, that's a load of quite hell of reasons but uh <laughs> just, just but but mainly just to um to be able to leverage at some point later down the line that money is yours whereas exactly. if you just lease to lease to lease at, in about five years you could have given up Shit, who knows how yeah. much money? Two grand a month uh -huh. over five years. That's a lot of money yeah. that you don't get anything for versus right. a mortgage at some point. Yep. All of that money goes to building your equity. That's so. an amazing point right there. The leverage. Mm -hmm. The leverage that you're getting is probably one of the best reasons why you own the home and the equity that is accumulated inside of that asset. Right. right. So the same thing goes for life insurance. Right. The only difference is this, is a, a, a home is... Not as liquid, obviously, right? Because you would have to essentially actually take a, a, a cash out refi or like a HELOC yeah. to be able to access the, that equity. Mm -hmm. With life insurance, it's completely different. It works pretty much the same way. So instead of keeping your money into a bank account, you can start this infinite banking account like a, or like a secure compounding account where you're putting X amount of dollars into this policy and it could be any number, right? I always recommend between 15 to 20% of somebody's annual income because it doesn't ha you don't have to be very aggressive, but you have to be somewhat serious, Yeah. right? Because for example, I have my policy that AJ set up for me when I was very broke and all I could afford at the time was like 15, uh, $150 a month, mm -hmm. right? So at this point, you know, it's been like, what, like five years or something like that? So that money that I'm putting in there is growing and it's compounding mm -hmm. every single year. So with, if I'm thinking in the future, it is, it is very important for me to understand that what I need, what I might not need right now, I'm going to need it later on. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is why it is important to plan before you actually need it. So it, it's, it's more about... Mm -hmm. It's more about people failing to plan instead of not having the plan. Oh, yeah, I think it's like we were talking about <clears throat> on the uh, episode before, just talking about like people not having that long term, like they're they're not able to see like a longer vision. Like it's like if it's not in front of them, then it doesn't exist. <clears throat> and it's kind of gratification. Is it? Yeah, definitely. But it's also it's it's something like people. I it worries me though because. Um, so there's a big uh, signifier uh, difference between like um, I think it's chimpanzees and humans, right? So like, okay. if you were to hide something behind something, they oh, don't yeah. they no longer th realize that it. Now. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So humans now there's a now you think well, it's object permanence, right? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like the same thing now. It's like, well, if 
it's if the problem, but we're talking about a problem now, so it's like a, a higher level of concept solving. So now if the problem isn't right in front of me, it doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the separator from humans who are successful long term versus humans who, you know, they just live in a moment and end that's up. A good analogy. But I, I feel like it's tough. And already everything you're saying, I absolutely agree with. But I feel like it's tougher now in our generation because of what the world yeah. has become. And that might sound like an excuse or a giant sure. cop out. But for some people, it's like, look. What do we always keep hearing? The world's getting hotter. The cost of living is becoming more and more expensive. Mm-hmm. It, there's really no middle class anymore. Sure. Or the middle class is paper fucking thin at this point. So what are we talking about? So either now I can spend my money while I'm young and I still have my, my mind right and my body and maybe no kids or maybe just one or two kids and I'm able to do some shit. Or am I going to save down the line when I'm 70, 80 and then just pass the book down to somebody else to take care of my dead body? You know what I'm saying? See, that, like that, it's, that's, it's a, that's, a great, that's a great point. Now, yeah. the way that I see it is like, look, retirement doesn't have to be 70. Okay. Right? So like the way I see it is, is you can have an early retirement if you plan for it. Yeah. For example, right now we live in a society where people are not thinking about 65. They're trying to figure it out now, right? It's like, how can I make a million dollars? Like mm-hmm. as soon as possible, right? So the, the same way that I'm thinking about it too is like, look, you, you're, you're not buying life insurance for your death. You're buying life insurance for the living benefits that has mm. attached to it. See, and I think that's what people are a bit unclear about. Or I'll just mm-hmm. speak for myself. Yeah. That's what largely I'm unclear about because even that idea of you compare, like saying that you're building equity when yeah. you do a policy like that, I'll be honest, I didn't even really know that. I, mm-hmm. I see it the way I was looking at it prior to this conversation, I'll just be honest, was kind of like car insurance mm-hmm. like, where you pay into this insurance and if you never ever have an accident or you never have to file a claim, that money's just gone and yeah. it's just gone. Right. And you just it's just another bill at the end mm-hmm. of the day. Yeah. Whereas what you're saying is making a, making me look at it more as an investment. Well think and about that's that, what right? People need to, exactly. need to hear. So so that's a great point that you made right now. So let's compare it. Let's let's do a little exercise real quick. When I say health insurance, what is that what is that what 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 does that correlate to you guys? I'm why do you need dedu- health insurance? I'm thinking deductibles. I'm thinking. But like, why, what's the purpose of health insurance? I feel like, well, like if or you, if you have get to go sick. to the hospital or something yeah. like that. Exactly. Sick, right? If you need to use it. Yeah, if you got to use it. And if you really think about it, the best type of a health insurance, if I'm not mistaken, is is the one that gives you like they give you a lot of benefits to go with preventative care. Yeah, why? Right. Because they yeah. want to keep you healthy. But because. Insurance mm-hmm. companies, it's not pharma. It's not the big pharma, right? Pharma wants to keep you sick. Insurance companies want to avoid you getting sick because they got to have to pay the medical bill, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. That's why they encourage people to go do their, their annual checkups mm-hmm. and preventative care, right? Lose weight, all kinds exactly. of stuff. Exactly. Yeah. So think about it this way. A car insurance. What's the purpose of the car insurance? If you get in into a car case you get into an accident. Is it, is it it's the main purpose in case you total it or is it in case of just to fix the car? Really to fix it, like, to like fix you it, said, right? along the, the lines total of is preventative. Once the car is totaled, you don't have the policy anymore, correct? Yeah. 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 So same thing goes for like home insurance, right? Or flood insurance. Things of that, uh, uh, th- those type of insurance are meant to make sure that whatever asset you're protecting, you're just transferring the risk so you can keep the asset for as long as possible, mm-hmm. right? So why is it life insurance? Why when we think about life insurance, what do we think about? When you die. Pretty like much you, death, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That should yeah, be called yeah, yeah. death insurance or final expense. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So when you think Spitting, about life, boy. <laughs> oh yeah. When you think about life insurance, you gotta understand that life insurance was originally made for living benefits, and the majority of people that were buying life insurance were the Rockefellers, the Carnegies, uh, not the Vanderbilts because they they fucked off their the entire wealth, but <laughs> <laughs> mo- most of the billionaire families that were buying a fuckload of life insurance. But think about it. If they're billionaires already, right. why are they buying the, the li- why are they buying life insurance? And it's mainly to preserve wealth, to be able to get the extra tax benefits, and to be able to have the leverage that family offices give. Mm, I'm telling nice. you, what would the Rockefellers do is one of the most influential books in my entire career. Mm. It explains what a family office structure is. If you guys haven't heard of what a family office is, think about like a wealth management firm for a specific family. Mm-hmm. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So another point to that too is 
if people think about, or if, if people tell me, it's like, ah, why, why do I need life insurance? Well, let me ask you another question. Where are you currently investing your money? Most people will say, oh, crypto, 401ks, stocks. Be like, okay, how's the crypto market right now? Oh, I wouldn't know. I, I, kind of yeah, ass, yeah, right? It's like yeah, tanking, yeah. right? Yeah. How's, how's the stock market right now? Kind of ass, right? Yeah. How are I mean, 401ks? Yeah. Unexciting. See, well, kind of ass. See, wait, wait, wait. See, yeah. I got my money underneath my sofa uh, cushion. <laughs> it's cushion, the okay? worst yeah. place to put I'm it. I'm thinking ahead, <laughs> all right? So we hit the horn, too. <laughs> see, they're not ready for me, all right? Fuck all that, all right? Man. It's, it's in my sock drawer, okay? You but know, uh, a wise man once said, if you, uh, if you don't pay any attention to your money, it's like a good girlfriend. She'll leave you. Ooh, hit that horn! I don't know. What, I don't know what you're drinking today, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm, you got to guess, baby. Man, got his artist juice. Wait, wait. I have, a, I have a question. I have a question because I feel like Wolf. Can you explain positive arbitrage to me? Like I'm an idiot. Yes. Which I am. I'm no, just you're a beautiful not. You're a very idiot. smart man. You're actually. He says smart. that because he likes compliments. Don't fall. <laughs> you're right, you're right, you're right. Women like, do that I all had, the time. I wish I had a couple so glasses me. of water, but I'll try to explain it as, as simple as I can. Okay. So positive arbitrage or the concept of infinite banking is the ability to be able to leverage the same dollar twice. So think about it this way. Let's just say you have a bottle of water. Yeah. Okay. The plastic bottle is the life insurance. It's the death benefit. The mm. water inside it is what you have been putting in, right? The the money that you've put in, put in it. So imagine you have a water uh, machine at home, right? You fill it up. Mm -hmm. That water inside it is your money that you've put in, okay? The promise of the life insurance company is to be able to pay out the death benefit plus the, the water inside it, okay? okay? So positive arbitrage comes into play when you're looking at this liquid inside of the bottle, mm. okay? which means that you can pour it out into a different cup, mm -hmm. right? Or what you can, what the insurance companies will tell you is, okay, so this is your liquidity. Meaning if you die tomorrow, I have to get, I have to pay this out to your family, the bottle and the water inside of it. Mm -hmm. I can collateralize this. And let's just say me as I'm the insurance company, I'm going to give you 75% of that water, the liquidity, not the not the whole bottle, okay. right? So I'm giving you my own glass, my insurance company, so you got to give me back the glass, mm. okay? But I'm but the water inside of it, you can drink it, okay? I'm collateralizing 75% of your water and giving you a glass of water here. And, and I'm going to continue to add more water onto this bottle mm -hmm. as interest while you still have the glass of water in your hands to okay. do whatever you want from it. Okay. Okay. So when you die, this water bottle that has the 100% of your cash value, you only leverage 75% of it, right? Mm. So all I got to do is pour out 75% on my glass of water and then give your family the rest. Wow. Mm. No, that's a, mm. no, that's a way to break that shit down. So you can make money with... It's basically like bar, it's basically like the insurance company gives you the money, right? Yes, pretty and much all it is. I, I I just noticed that that example was a lot more complicated without the without it. <laughs> it, it was, don't, don't even we'll, we'll edit it in. Get that in editing. Okay? <laughs> Chewie's yeah, yeah, like no. hell no. Okay, boy. Okay. <laughs> so is the infinite part? I mean, so the infinite part is now that I have this seventy five percent of that that I've borrowed from. Am I then reinvesting that into something Correct. else? Or? So the, the reason why it's called infinite banking is right. because you can do that process over and over and over for the rest of your life, right? Gotcha. So the whole the, the the brass tax comes out to this is you have a hundred thousand dollars, for example, into the life insurance policy. Mm -hmm. This is liquid. This is the collateral that the insurance company is gonna is gonna collateralize. So now the insurance company is gonna give you seventy five grand out of that. Mm -hmm. This hundred thousand never left, so mm -hmm. you still have the hundred thousand here growing at an average rate of eight percent. Mm -hmm. You with me so far? Yep. That seventy five thousand that I gave you as the insurance company, let's just say it's costing you five percent. So if you do the math, I still owe you three. Mm -hmm. So I'm still gonna credit you three while you have seventy five grand in your in your Got hands. You. And now you can do whatever you want with it. Mm -hmm. And that three is the, the positive uh, arbitrage. Gotcha. Yeah. Wow, man. See that's that makes sense. That's dope, that's man. a lot better, huh? Yeah, I shouldn't dope. have complicated that much. No, no, no. I <laughs> No, I just wanted to throw that out there because I feel like um, it's an interesting concept and it took me a while to wrap my mind around it. But when I understood it, I was like, like everybody should know and understand this. And I think it would make people who want to, you know, purchase life insurance, it would make them understand the benefits of actually yeah. having it like 
as a as they're living because mm-hmm. I think that that's really I think a lot of the times just being real with with the life insurance industry because like as Wolf knows I, I I was doing life insurance for about six years and I took a break for my own personal, personal mental reasons, yeah. you know reasons whatever yeah but the point is is I think that um. I think that if people just understood the benefits that they could use it for during their life, opposed to uh, uh, applying these uh, social st- these stigmas to it that they may have heard from a friend or something like that. And and the question you asked him earlier, and this is like my last point on this, was the question you asked him her- earlier. What I think one of the biggest hurdles is is just to keep it real. I think some things can't be heard from the homie. Like yeah. some things just can't be heard from the homie. Like. If you my homie and and I'm trying to put you on to like, you know, something that sometimes uh, things are caught and not taught. So like I could I could give it to you perfect. But you'd be like, shut up. You the homie. I remember when you uh, tripped over uh, that fence and got (laughs) bit by a dog. Like, shut your ass up. You know what I'm saying? I think some things just can't be heard from the homie. To be They always think uh, what was your line? Um, Estimated income. They gonna thought it was a scam. Right. True. Yeah. Sometimes if you if you make it too if and that's another thing too. Sometimes when people be making too much money, people are just negative. Yeah. And they're gonna be like, it has to be a scam. If he's making money like that, if he's making thirty k in a month, oh, it's got to be a scam. Yeah. Or 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 what could it be? It could be that the market pays you what you're worth, and yep. potentially. And I think the issue with that is people have to look at what they're doing. And say, damn, well, I'm not making money like that. Maybe what I'm doing to the market isn't quite as valuable currently or, you know what I'm saying, or in marketing is involved and stuff like that, too. But. Well, well, look, man, a hey, round of applause for my dog, Wolf, man. Thank you. You got me some knowledge. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have you plug yourself later in the episode again because... Uh, I think a lot of us, more people, like more people, I'm tired of seeing um, for, when some younger person passes away and the first thing you see is a GoFundMe. Yeah. yeah. You see, a, hey, can you donate? Hey, this is yep. the cash app. It's sad. If we're doing a car wash. People by the side of the freeway. Uh-huh. When things like that could be prevented if 100%. you're smarter with your money. So we're going to definitely have ways for people to reach out to you, as, as, you know, and you. ask you questions about stuff like yeah, that. I appreciate because, that, man. Yeah. No, appreciate that a lot. Yeah. Do super, me a favor, though. What's up? Please get insured. Yeah, I I went yeah, look. Let important. me let me get my house first. Nah, then, nah, nah, bro. That's what they all look, say, can, isn't look, it? Look, look, hold on, you can get <laughs> you can get a smaller policy, man. You know, later on, if you want to convert it into something a little bit more permanent, that's fine. But look, man, in my twenty dollars, here's the thing, bro. Yeah. I had a good friend of mine, um, Drew Physique. You know, I used to post his memes all the time. He was he was one of one of the the most beautiful people I ever met. And I only met him online. He he stood up for men's mental health and all that, right? And yeah. You, you know, um, I was actually supposed to meet him not too long, like a few weeks ago, actually. Um, but he passed away last month Damn, of, of, of a motorcycle accident. Mm. And I, it, it's crazy because I've had conversations with him. And you know what he always said? I don't think I need life insurance. Mm. I'm not planning on dying anytime soon. Damn. Yeah. That's, that's what they all say. I'm not look, I'm not trying to fear monger. I know like comments are gonna say, Oh, like this, this is the <laughs> yeah. same strategy of all life insurance agents, fear monger. It's like look, I rather you think that I'm a fear monger and maybe put that little bug in you and like actually you do it, right? Even if it's like a small like two hundred and fifty thousand dollar policy, whatever. On a term like a term policy, right? A small policy, it doesn't matter. Thirty bucks. Thirty bucks, yeah. You fart that out at I, Starbucks. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather you <laughs> think that I'm a fear monger. And make sure that your family is at least taken care of when you're not here, because you will not know, because you'll be gone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know it, what I'm saying? And then later on, you can just you can set up your infinite banking where you're a little bit more like an, on an investor mindset, you know. But at the very very least, dude, he set me up with an Everest policy that was twenty bucks just for final expense. I had a, I have wow. a little twenty thousand dollar a month policy that still comes out of my bank account every single month just to cover my funeral expenses. So in case something happens. You know, before That's this right. big policy yeah. that I have goes through, right? In case something happens, my mom at least has twenty thousand dollars to bury me, plus whatever the other policies have. You know what I'm saying? Nice. Twenty bucks. Nice. Twenty bucks. Yeah. Now that's that's literally McDonald's now. That's hey, you what I'm saying, bro. Come Dude. on, man. Okay, all right, you Come right, on, bro. Hey, ah, you you right. You I right. ate a lobster. I'm not jinx myself. I ate a lobster sandwich. It was like a. It was. What? I ain't gonna lie. It was good. Lobster but it was sandwich? like a lobster. You know, like a lobster Jeez. meat. But it was yeah, a sandwich. Nice. Yeah, and then. Nice. 
It was twenty two dollars, bro. Yeah, <laughs> twenty two dollars. I could have got some life insurance. I know, yeah. yeah. Life that's, insurance. Lobster, that's lobster in Phoenix, ain't we? Ain't near no damn. Yeah, <laughs> they had uh, <laughs> that shit got shit all they had <laughs> from, from on the helicopter. Yeah, yeah, no facts. <laughs> Um. All right. So yeah, we're gonna give you guys Wolf's at by the end of the episode, Appreciate so that way that. you guys can follow him, ask more questions, and you know, get in the comments below if you guys have any questions in the comments as well. And let me know why I need to get insurance. <laughs> well, me and our RC too, right? Yeah. yeah. Both yes. yeah, 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 and those two too. Yeah. And, and sorry, yeah, the, the yeah, 200 people in there. Yeah. yeah everybody, yeah. all 200 <laughs> people in the studio audience. <laughs> <laughs> all right, y'all. So now we're gonna get into one of our our most popular segments ever in the history of the Q Up Podcast: Hot Cues. Hot Cues. Where Q's. No, this is what we do when we do like our quick little like three to five minute rundowns about different new stories happening in the internet but we this is the fun part uh-huh. yeah, i'm excited man yeah. I'm excited. are you ready for this hell party. yeah bro no oh, look i love talking ready? about infinite banking i love talking about finance and shit but like give me something that's exciting uh-huh. and, yeah, like and that. makes my makes Let's my go. titties we like that you know. <laughs> 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 we the and the horns all right let it, let it all out all right there you go let's go and right. you know what's funny about this wolf they be they be talking about shit and i guarantee you i don't even know any of these things I not. I, I, don't I know. know. That's funny. <laughs> Are you proud about that? You proud? You don't know. Hey, shit? brother, I be out the way, man. I mean, That's I all. Think I, I know, know one. <laughs> well, I was funny because I don't I know just, anything. We'll 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 fill y'all in and. We'll, I need to we'll get them back discussion. one day. I'm gonna get them back. I, like, cause I still gotta. You ask. mad at us because you don't no, know no, no, no. the NFL? Yeah, but I gotta ask you yeah, like okay. name <laughs> like name ten of anime characters. <laughs> Yeah, come on, man. Yeah, Aaron. you're cooked. Shut come up. Come on, man. I could probably name the whole entire Who? Dragon Ball Z roster. Go ahead. Go ahead. Are you want me to do it? 30 seconds. Oh, my gosh. You, 30 seconds. 30 seconds? Ready. All right, we got the timer. Set. I'm going to name just different random Go, 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 go. All right. Uh, uh, God damn it. See, now Goku, Vegeta, Piccolo, Gohan, Goten, uh, This nigga Trunks, put three fingers up for one. Uh, Bulma, uh, Krillin, Yajirobe. And then we do Hunter Hunter. We got Gone, Kilo. Oh, yeah, uh, okay. Hey, freaking Karapika. Don't Damn. fuck with me. Okay, man. okay. Wait, 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 wait. wait, 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 wait. Those, those are like the most Monkey generic D, things. Luffy. Okay, okay, okay. Fine. But those are the most generic. You did all Hanma. Okay, okay. You did all, man. Okay, what about Demon Slayer? Okay, what about Berserk? Berserk? Wait, wait. You can't name one character from Berserk? No. You're just one, bro. Just one. You're a casual. You're a casual. You're a casual. You're a Sailor Moon. <laughs> is, that, is, that anime? <laughs> is that anime? It's a yeah, it's Sailor Moon is anime. 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 Yeah. That shows you how much Mobile I'm Suit Gundam. Hell yeah. Hey, all that's right, hard. There you hey, go. Gundam is a hard one. All right, that's Jet hard Set one. Radio. Anyways, all right, let's all right. go ahead and get into Hot Cues. <laughs> Jet Set Radio is a great guy. I had to try to get him back. I didn't expect Yeah, I got your ass. You did get it. No, no, no. You you did get him on the actual traditional anime. I see wouldn't have He didn't get into anything cool like Jujutsu Kaisen or anything. Exactly. Oh, my God. He didn't get into anything really good. Oh, and don't forget Naruto as well. Okay, cool. What'd you Call him? No, <laughs> no, 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 Legend uh-huh. and uh, UFC star, soon to be mega star, Sugar Sean O'Malley won his first ever championship at the Bantamweight. Yes, sir. Woo! As a in, Bantamweight. In a thrilling fashion. In a thrilling fashion, knocked out my boy Aljamain Sterling in the second round. She Me and RC crazy. had a quick little ten dollars side bet. Like we was like, yep. oh, because I like Sugar Sean and I wanted him to win. He reps, he reps Phoenix. He seems he's out here all the time. He's a great guy. But I just thought Aljo just might be able to get him on the ground if anything, you know, a little ground to pound to take him he's out. He's saying like him because he was white. Wow, <laughs> I like white people. I like Artie. <laughs> Damn, I'm white. I identify as white. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, Bernie Sanders. Uh, <laughs> Bernie. Yeah, man. Feel the burn, but um, but no, Sugar Sean knocked them out, man. Even though I think it was yeah. kind of slightly an early stoppage. No, no. the referee is the referee's I job mean, to protect I the mean, fighter. Think the ref, about it, the dude. He got up. he got he got hit like ten times in Thank a row. Thank you. That's exactly bro. what I. He was still exactly moving though. He wasn't just laid out. Well, yeah, no. but I, I mean, look, I don't he know. Was. Do you rather get knocked out and get brained? I don't know, bro. Yeah, he no. was defenseless. He was on the ground. He was not defenseless. Bro, he was he still took, moving. He took eight solid shots to the face. I've seen what do you people want him do that. Do? Get back up twitch? and knock somebody out. Look, go look at Chet Congo versus uh, this Pat ain't, Barrett. This ain't boxing, <laughs> you though, want him to the twitch? UFC. They not, they not just going to let you. That happened in the UFC. I need to see nah, his no. jaw hanging off <laughs> and his eyeball hanging <laughs> out. I think, I think Sean caught him, dropped him, and from there it was – there was a slight moment in there where he could have recovered – but after about yeah. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen more punches, okay, yeah. it was like it was over. I'm just pissed it didn't go past round three. 
Yeah, oh, I would have made five grand, five bands. Damn, Damn. fucked up the parlay. Yeah, dude. Damn. I, I made two hundred bucks. You know. Okay. Hey. Oh, hey. But I bet five thousand. So. Oh. So it was not that much of a. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So did you lose the rest? No, no, no. Oh, okay, so, but you still made two hundred. <laughs> yeah, but like, think about it. You bet five thousand just you to make two hundred. Yeah, 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 you're right. You're right. You're right. My, 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 you made oh. something. Cause trust oh, me, I would have lost. I would have lost five racks, bro. That's why I had to stop betting. I don't bet. I don't bet. You lose ten. <laughs> I lost ten dollars, but I also won forty dollars when I beat you in Madden three straight times. So I don't no, you didn't. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! Here we Slender. go. Oh, oh, what you Slender. Mean? Slender. What happened in the last three games that we played? You won one. You want to listen here? You won one. We're so not doing this. Oh, here we go. This is no, 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 We get in on this type of thing. Because we played the new Madden 24 at the crib, uh -huh. right? Me and our, me and our first two played. games. He beat me the first two games, right? And he was technically up $20, right? We uh, put 10 on it. We right. makes the game more fun. The third game, it was the full Monty. Either if he Double wins, he won. He would have won 40 Or if I win, he wouldn't have won nothing. You what happened in the last game? I whooped his ass. I didn't pay him a nickel. But what happened the day before that? I didn't. I didn't blow on the last game. Aaron, you quit the second game because you was getting blown out. Yeah, you, you never made me quit. Beat me, but the fourth game, <laughs> you won. Game, I beat you anyway. Wait, wait, wait. Anyways, so I am I hearing you didn't? Am I hearing this right? So he he beat you two out of three. Right? Yes. The time, but two the time out of before that, I beat him three straight times. Two out of the last three. But the time before that, I beat him three straight times. Oh, okay. All right, there you go. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a good little rivalry right there. It's yeah. a good little rivalry. Rivalry. All right, hot numbers. And if y'all want to see me at Madden, drop your ass in the comments. I'll beat your ass too. Okay. If I'm being serious, I'm on PS5. Fight me. When that new Mortal Kombat comes out, drop your ass in there. No, no, no. Don't do that because he he is dangerous. Yeah. Well, if you play video games, Aaron, Aaron, don't start. Yeah, I do, bro. Aaron, okay. So I'll be honest. I'm not the typical gamer that plays like these online. Stupid games, you know. Same. I I rather I rather play story driven games. You know, I'll, I'll be honest. I cried with Red Dead Redemption Two, man. Really? Mm. Oh, yeah. dude, I love that game. Arthur Morgan, I love it. Arthur you know? Morgan, yeah, I love that game. So, what's like, going on? I was Arthur Morgan with a high honor. I almost cried at God of War though. Right? God oh, of War is wait, don't don't spoil that. Yeah, don't. You spoil gotta, that oh, you gotta I watch play, it. I, I played the first play the, the first God of War, but I'm the type of gamer that I like a story like story driven. You know, so that's why I, you know, I I, I absolutely despise. Fortnite, you know, Roblox, Fortnite, Roblox Warzone. I had despise yeah. that Damn. shit, bro. You you know what you know what game you should play, Wolf, and everybody should play this if you haven't. I bet it's I've a, already it's played a it. fucking work of art. It's called Near Automata. I already played it. You played it, isn't it? Yep. It's a yep. work of. It's art. one of those it's games that, that it's crazy because you finish it and then you play another run and it has like a second ending and a third ending. Wow. It's crazy because it like continues think, to develop. I think that it's game has wild. thirty something endings. Yeah, man. it is. It is disgusting. Well, we're like, gonna start great. promoting them now because they ain't pay us nothing. Hey so man, much, yeah, we okay, just gotta yeah, talk. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm, as an appreciation I of the art for form. I respect that you're not beating me in Mortal Kombat. Hot cue number two. Back on track, baby. So. Another famous yeah. uh, Arizonian, uh, mm -hmm. now uh, still, now living in California, really big time podcaster, still a big games. time DJ as well. Big name in the hip hop community. Our dog, Bootleg Another Kev, legend, Arizona legend, Arizona legend himself, Bootleg Kev, uh, recently became viral on the internet because he had an interview with the up and coming rapper named ESTG. And in the interview, boot, you know, if you watch a Bootleg Kev interview, he's going to ask you different questions rather you know, rather than hip hop. He's going to talk to you about. Well, I, I heard more about that, which even made me more on bootleg Kev's side. Okay, what's yours? So ESTG's people reached out to Kev before the interview, sa literally saying, hey, ESTG, yes, he wants to promote the music, but he also wants this to be a different type of interview. So here are some things that he's interested in okay. that are outside of the music. And that's why Kev was asking him about football and all this other stuff and about the universe and, and yeah. galaxies and shit, yeah. So why did he walk out? Then exactly. Got so here, fin finish, finish. Yeah. So the story now. Kev was asking G about you know like his football career when he was playing because uh, G used to play football back in college and stuff like that and growing up and just about He's university. A big dog. Yeah, yeah. Just talking about regular different shit. And the ESG was like, "Yo, I thought we were here to talk about my. How, how does this have to do anything with my album?" Mm -hmm. And Kev's like, okay. And then he's like, I'm trying to promote my album. And he's like, fuck this, basically. Just got up and walked oh, out. Shit. Left mid-interview. It was awkward, too. It was very awkward. Kev was like, okay. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, oh, yep. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's gone. And, yep, yeah, he, he really left. So, and after that, Kev went viral, man, because Kev is probably the most, if not the number one, but at least the top three most respected interviewers and personalities yeah, in hip-hop right Fun now. Fun fact about Kev, actually, um, 
he used to go to Evit, I think, or he, or his teacher used to be Steve Gross, which is one of my really good friends. That's what, that's why I, I I started with music myself too, mm. and through the the radio program. So I've always wanted to meet uh, Bootleg Kev, but yeah, that's crazy. That's fire. Yeah, no, Kev is a really close friend to our boy Jello. Shout out to my boy Jello TV. Oh, for Jello. One of them mm-hmm. saying, yeah, him and Kev grew up together as well. So you know, Kev has been in the scene. Owns nightclubs out here, yeah, yeah, yeah. Still yeah. DJs out here from time to time. So for him to go viral and just to make his platform even bigger, dope for Kev, man. We're happy, we're happy for you, bro. Can't Hell wait yeah. to you on our, to, you know, to you on our little show. You need, you know, you know where we at, Kev. You know where we at, Kev. I thought, <laughs> I thought it was a little corny how ES, ESTG walked out though. He ain't have to do that. Yeah, that's that's doing a do bit that. much, but I mean, that's gonna only help his brand too. So. so he, so he walked out because. So there was a lapse in communication between him and his team. Is that what I'm surmising? Maybe because his team, apparently, from what RC said and what mm-hmm. was mentioned and talked about, was his team gave Kev like a list of things to talk about because G apparently told his team, hey, I want this to be a different Well, I think it, it, it's, isn't, isn't ESTG the same guy that went viral with Jules from uh, 98.3? talking about Talking about... Um, yeah, I think she oh, was talking about be, when they were talking about helping the guy out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she's like, if she makes more money than him, him, you know. I can't remember who that was. I that think that was ESTG. No? Okay, yeah, it might have. Yeah, that might, so I think that. that I mean, that makes sense. Like, if, if he if he reached out, said, like, "Hey, I want a different type of interview," because that that clip went viral. So I mean, like, Whoa. you know. I don't know. Either he's a genius or he needs to talk to his team and figure some shit out. It's, I mean, it's imagine if this was a marketing ploy. It's like, hey, I'm going to ask him to m- ask me some different questions and I'm going to walk out because I know it's going to go viral. That's right? true, too. That, that's exactly what I was about to say. I, was like, I feel like he just walked Damn. out just so more people can get more eyes on the album now. Because, I mean, to be honest, I didn't realize he was releasing an album until that interview. Facts. That's true. So, yeah. ah. I mean, it I, must, it, if that I, was the case. I just case. feel it was more strategic than we think. I think. If that was the case, it was played well because it felt like I felt the awkwardness through the phone. Oh, no, no, like, it was yo, sure it felt is, genuine. Well, well, maybe. well, maybe Kev wasn't in on it. You know That's true, maybe too. Kev was yeah. just like a byproduct of, hey, I'm going on the bootleg Kev show. Let me find a way to be memorable because who would really care? I mean, besides just people yeah, in his band, it was the really first be like, oh, I'm looking out. for the ESGG interview. Like, but maybe, apparently he was late true. to the interview, too. I mean, like two hours there's just late, a lot yeah. of shit going on there. Rappers. That's a rapper thing. <laughs> and finance bros. Sorry. I, Rappers I was late and finances. Too. I was late too. I'm sorry, guys. No, no, you no, good. No, 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 you no, good. You know I was late. Yeah, you were late. Yeah. yeah Come on, Artie. Artie, Artie always late. We have Artie be on CP time. Um, all right. <laughs> Hot Q number three. So King, an artist named King out of Atlanta, AK, and he's known as being the son of T.I., uh, trying to find his own roots in the hip-hop game. I recently got on Twitter, and or X, whatever you want to call it, and he talked about him kind of getting uh, sunned by some of the other hip hop stars in the game. So like the baby was literally charging him a thousand a verse. No, no, not a thousand. How much? You said one thousand a verse. Oh, sorry, a hundred thousand. Yes, sorry. Yes, yes. Damn. Sorry, the baby yeah. was charging not him a hundred thousand a verse, and Sexy Red was charging him fifty thousand for a show. Mm-hmm. A hundred thousand for like a he was verse being from true. from wait who from the baby from the baby, from the baby? Yeah. didn't he get canceled? Ah, uh, has anybody ever really canceled? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, maybe one. temporarily. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, but people even stop still, going to his shows. A uh, hundred thousand to me, it just at a hundred thousand, it just breaks down. It starts breaking down to like to me, if it's literally not somebody like Drake. If I'm putting six figures down, I would rather. I don't see why somebody wouldn't just put. I six mean, doesn't figures. Kendrick Lamar charge like seven fifty? Or am I making that up? No, that sounds about right. Well, I think I think bro, that's that sounds about right. But though, Kendrick, though, yeah, you're right, you're right. Yeah, right. one hundred thousand from the baby. Now, uh, like maybe, but maybe like two, three years ago, when like Bop and all that shit was going crazy, and the baby was like, they, the baby was true. at least top one or two in hip hop at a certain point. But the yeah, baby, you like you, like we were saying, like the baby has negative connotation attached to his name so to now he does yeah so to be 100k for yeah, was this expensive. before or after that okay I, but, I if, but like, if i say the baby you know who i'm talking about but if i say king who, who the fuck is that yeah right. i feel like a hundred thousand ain't that crazy of a price for a feature Not really the baby because that song look, well, the baby still makes music the son of ti you know yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess that's why I would tax them. Yeah, that's a yeah. good point. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like at that point, if you right? if you yeah. know what the, if you know what they got in, it's the, like, in it's their like pockets, uh, like the the joke about uh, selling oregano to the the college white kids. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. for like thirty dollars yeah. a, a bag. Yeah, yeah, you know, hey, <laughs> if you know they got it, uh, I, yeah, and, so. and and they can't even argue. I know you got it. <laughs> I, I, I know no, your daddy. Boy, I seen boy, your daddy. Your dad's an attorney. It. Boy, I watched ATL yesterday. All right, I seen your daddy. So do we think? Do we think King? 
maybe expected a little less because he's the son of T.I.? Does he Do got we, bars? Is there, is there some he, of that at play too? Well, I think it's that because think about all these hip-hop kids that are coming up. The King Combs, all these other guys that are trying to make their name off of their parents' backs. Yeah. And it's like, cool, okay, yeah, your dad might be Diddy or your dad might be Snoop Dogg or your dad might be T.I., but it's like, what have you done? Mm. Do you know the only one who, the, to be honest, the <laughs> only one of like a a, a a spawn of a famous person who was good is uh what's Bob Marley's son's name? Ziggy Ziggy? I think so. Or Damien? Well he had a lot yeah, of sons. Damien Ziggy, Marley, Damien. Well well one of, I I don't know. But his sons, maybe yeah, I'm mixing yeah, them Damian up. Damien Marley's the guy they, that did like their the songs song with be good. Right? Yeah. And like their music actually is fire. But honestly, True. if I'm being honest, like uh uh King Diddy's Combs. sons. King Combs. That should be another ass, person named boy. King. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, King that Holmes should be King. ass. He, he the Diggy only Simmons. The only song that I listen to with him is the one uh, with uh, the the one with Kodak on it. And I literally, oh, as soon yeah, as his part comes, I okay, stop the song. okay, wow. gun, gun to your head. Name a name a song. By name King Combs. Song. By well, King Combs. That can't stop, won't stop. Can't and he stop. had another one. Yeah, that's the really? only one. He had that's one it. Like, well, I would have to thing? die, man. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to die. Just pull the trigger. Yeah. No, um, we forgot one other artist that has a famous dad in hip-hop. That's probably Coyle surpassed. Ray. Yes. Yeah. Who? Coyle Ray. Ray. Coyle Ray? Oh. Her dad is Ben Zeno. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but I think it, I think it works yeah. different. for. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I think it works different from women, for women. And I'm going to say why and... And I don't care what y'all think, but I care Break what you the think. Glass, I care what you think. I care what you think. Not let me clarify that. I care what you think, but I'm saying I'ma say it. Yeah, say it. And I don't care about the emotions involved, right? <laughs> okay. I think that men are held to a standard that has to do with the struggles they came from in hip hop, whereas women are more like about party, ass shaking and marketing, like that Facts. type of shit. So it's like when Coyle Ray comes and drops a song, we don't we don't want it. We honestly, let's let's be real. I don't when I listen to like female artists, very seldomly do they portray like, oh, I'm been struggling through my life and I came from the hood and blah. There's but a lot every, of women that do that though. Yeah, but who when? Name a that's, song. That's interesting. I just yeah. think that women don't they don't have to go that route. It's almost like men almost have to go that route, or they have to come like a lot they have to really be able to sing also, really good and be and be very commercial or some shit. I already have to disagree with you, bro, because there's a lot of men that also have to go that party where you anybody really care about what Blueface's actual life is really about? <laughs> yeah, or but do we care about him rapping about thoughts. And no, shit but like we that. also, but we also, when we hear Blueface, we don't. We truly like. I think majority of people truly believe that Blueface is a crip and he's from the hood, and so he can rap about all the shit that he raps but about. And we don't. I mean, I don't. I don't. I'm not saying he isn't, but I'm just saying it's believable. So we already attach that connotation to him. There's been a lot of rappers that come in, like like what we're just saying right now. A lot of these rappers that are sons of T.I. and shit, the reason why is just because we're like, bro, what is you rapping about, bro? <laughs> like, what the fuck is you rapping about, dog? Struggle? Like, you what struggle? Yeah, what but story? You gotta prove, what you gotta prove it on through? point because they're not really rapping about shit, but RC, what was your And they're not no, good. I was, I was just gonna say, I also don't know our not only just men, but just the world at large. Is the world at large ready to hear about the discrimination and like the bullshit that a black woman has to go through just day to day life? Like, like men can talk about that as kind of more acceptable, I think. But like, think about it, dead ass. Are you gonna be in the car listening to how this black woman is telling you how she was like being oppressed and denied opportunities and shit? Like, it's, it just it does it does feel different, but I think for different reasons. Like, yeah, I mean, I think I think, I think, I think, I think if it was done reasons. well, I think I would fuck with it. I think if it it was like a, I feel like Nick, I feel like Nicki Minaj probably came with some bars like that before. I mean, I don't, I don't listen, I don't, but she can really rap though. A lot of these girls can't really rappers. rap. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, like, I'm not. I'm not trying to be that guy, but like, I just can't. I don't know. But see, but but that, it feels that weird, might, right? Like, that might be listening a little... to like wet ass pussy or some shit. Oh yeah. yeah see, yeah. but that's a that's but that's the thing I'm saying is like, as a dude, I can't get on a song and be like, seven days a week. Or it, wait, wait. Especially, especially. <laughs> wait, wait. Especially, <laughs> I couldn't get on a song. Let me down, Tatiana. But right, right. But let's not ignore the variable skis, 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 that skis. I said before. The variable is. These is real hood dudes rapping about this shit. If you took T.I. son and you had him get on the song and say, and I dick real long and a dick real strong, blah, 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 you'd be like, turn this shit the fuck off, boy. This shit weird. But if you got a hood dude coming about talking about how I got that Glock up on my lap and, I'm, like, and, and he's still talking about some sexual shit. 
we can. I feel like most dudes, we we like that shit. Yo, I'm gonna need y'all to argue with Artie in the comments because I don't have the energy or the time to do that today. But what, what do you mean? Ar- ar- I mean, I kind of I kind of agree with AJ though a little. Bit. Just a, I mean a, no, l- a little bit, you know. But, but but see that that's to my point. I just think, and I'm I'm not saying that this is the case for y'all, but I just think people at large, it's kind of unfortunate. But people don't have a listening ear for the problems that women face. Like I think a True. lot of men are are more dismissive about the issues and struggles of just being a woman in general, period, like then like the struggles of a man having to get it out the mud and work. Yeah. But I don't think it, but I don't, kids and shit. But I don't want to put it I don't want to cause I, I li I also I don't want to to put it in that light of like, oh it's not like we don't care. I think it's a relatability thing. True. Like I just relate more to like a hood dude talking about hood right. shit. I can't relate but I can understand but I can't I can empathize but I it's not like I want to sit there, you know. You know, it's just I think it's a relatability thing. Is all, what right, I'm all right, all right, all right. Well, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to come back to that one. That's a very interesting point behind it. But I think, I think just there's there, that's a very nuanced conversation. So we're gonna have to table that one for now. Um, and before we wrap up hot cues, we have one little small sub segment within hot cues. So I know if you guys watched that episode when we did the Montgomery uh, River Riverwalk <laughs> brawl, or whatever the hell y'all call it, y'all know the chair, all that shit, right? Yeah, Aquaman, bro. Yeah. You see that when that, it, when that big ass fight? You didn't see that shit? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then when dude swam over there. Yeah. So we bro, called that, that a was... great moment in Black history, that right? Shit was we had hilarious, the whole dog. thing, you know, with the narrative. This one is actually going to be a disappointing moment. Oh, oh shit. Black shit. Yeah. Oh. And, you know, two is going to get this in editing, I believe you, dog. Um, this time, so Tyler Perry, famous movie director, artist, play director, d- actor, d- done uh-huh. Medea, everything, right? Um, Tyler Perry was recently in line to purchase BET, or at least that's what a lot mm-hmm. of like news outlets say. Like, Tyler Perry is going to own BET. His mm-hmm. movie's showing that shit all the time. Might as well own it. And he's rich enough with his studios and everything. But apparently his offer of $2 billion was turned down. Rejected, yep. What? Was rejected mm. because the, I don't, is it Paramount that actually owns BET? I, I think? believe so, Viacom. Yes, they want $3 billion. And they yeah. turned down not only Tyler Perry, but 50 Cent and a couple others tried to get together and buy it. Diddy and a couple yep. others tried to get together and buy it. But the nobody wanted to go. $3 billion. $3 billion. And 50 Cent himself said, this is not worth $3 billion. No. Nah. No yeah. Man. So, but now, so now that's Tyler a hell Perry. of a uh, of a counter offer, dude. Three billion. Yeah, that's a From fat two jump. To three. Man. Yeah. yeah. Like, for for BT, I mean, if it's two to three million, I get it. But like billion, that's, that's like a, a, a thousand millions. That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a fat jump. Yeah. So it's a it's a bummer because Tyler Perry probably would have done a lot of good. Who knows? Maybe he might be able to rectify the deal. Maybe they can still come to the table. But if they're still asking for three billion. I don't think any. I hate to say it, yeah. but and y'all probably ain't gonna agree agree with me on this, but I kind of, to be honest, didn't want Tyler Perry to own BET. Why not? Really? Who better? Um, I just I don't know. I haven't <laughs> I haven't completely conceptualized where this is coming from yet, but you know, usually I find myself to have very logical and sound arguments, so I just really need to think about it more. But something about the idea of Tyler Perry owning BET didn't sit mm. right with me, and I haven't completely understood. You know, it I, re- I respect that about you, AJ, because at least he won't try to like talk out of his ass. You know, no, that's fair. Yeah, right. I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm not gonna bullshit and be like, so this you hate is Tyler why. Perry and, and I don't hate, hate Tyler Perry. And you hate women. I don't hate, but see, I, wait, that's a weird correlation. I don't right hate there, Tyler Perry. Where, but did, see, where I does hate that women. come from? <laughs> where, like, because Tyler Perry plays. Every Everybody's black grandma in his movies. All right, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, I, I don't know. Tell us how you hate women. I know, right, <laughs> bro? I, now you get the massage any hat, bro. I I really like dislike I women just, with a passion. <laughs> I, I just like them so much that I prefer to really mostly only talk to them and uh, only spend time with them to you know kind of like punish myself. Okay, cool. You see, before we get canceled, that's hot cues right there. That's All a right. that's a joke and a disappointing yeah. moment in Black history, and also with Artie. Satire, guys. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Yeah, they are bugging. Wild. But I don't want Tyler Perry to own BT. All right, y'all. So before we get about it, we do have one more topic we do kind of want to touch on. Bro, you out of your damn mind. Whatever. Um. So Wolf, do you call it Twitter or X? What do you call it? I don't even have it. Woo! 
I call it Twix. <laughs> Twix. Twix. Actually, it's Twix know. now. Well, no, I, I, I fell for the trap of threads, and then I, I used it for two days, and then I was like, this Same. is useless. Same. Same thing with Twitter, man. Like, I just I felt like Twitter was such Twitter a- Twitter shits on threads. Twitter. Uh, yeah, pro- oh, probably. Yeah. I just feel like, dude, Twitter in general, I, I feel like it's, it's just such a such a garbage dump. Cesspool. It is. It's yeah. like, it's it like is. so- I heard there's a lot of like OnlyFans bots now. Oh yeah, Twitter. oh yeah. Twitter, so Twitter, like, Twitter's Reddit's for kids now. Yeah, you know I mean, like, I have Reddit, you know. So like, I go on Twitter uh, when I used to go on Twitter, uh, and it was always for, uh, <laughs> for, you know, like you subscribe, follow porn. me here. Oh, porn. you know what it is? Oh, it's it's like you see these girls, porn. and you'd be like, oh, she's bad, and then you, you're, I'm just curious, like. Oh, she has a Twitter. I wonder what she posts on Twitter. <laughs> and that's, no. and, and, Yo, that's and, facts, and though. Then you end up on Twitter. Now, crazy. now Twitter shows you it all. Ain't, ain't nothing yeah. left to the imagination. But now, True. Elon's trying to flip some shit with X right now, and he's trying to find a way, or at least he hinted at trying to find a way to remove the block the, the function to block somebody from your page, mm-hmm. and that caused the whole entire app to go into an uproar. Okay. Like, can you imagine not being able to block somebody? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So, okay. So I have I have like mixed feelings about this because I'm curious about your take yeah on this. okay so I get it right I get the fact it's like you know what I don't want this person to harass me I like I'm just gonna block them right but at the same time it's like have you ever been in that one of those type of like arguments and like they attack your mama or some shit or, like they say something like really foul <laughs> yeah and then yeah. you you're like draft up all this oh, entire long true. ass reply it's like you motherfucker like I'm about to show you now and then you click it's like sorry this post like whatever and then you try yeah, to click it's like yeah, the count is block. gone and like you mother you know what I mean yeah, yeah. It's like it's like a, a so point. the way that I see it is like Twitter is supposed to be a town square for. Um, open conversation. open di- open discourse, right? Yeah. So obviously, I'm Dialogue. assuming like if it becomes like too violent, then there there's certain ways to like mediate that. But I I just don't think you should be able to like throw the stone, break the glass, and then hide the hand. You know what I'm saying? Ah, a good point. I feel that. Wolf. I didn't even so, look at but, it that because I think I think the way point. that Elon is trying to do it is like he you can block people on DMs. So if it becomes mm-hmm. like a personal type of harassment, that's a difference. So you can block them. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know how, but I don't know. Well, see, for me, blocking on Twitter might not be the same for, like, if Instagram will move the block button. Because on Instagram, you see a lot more fake pages. I'm not saying there's not any fake pages on Twitter or X. But Instagram, me being a DJ, bro, literally, I got to deal with fucking 10. I've had to deal with, like, five to six different fake pages that me and people are using because I have a public page. People using my pictures and trying to scam people that might be trying to look at me and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. Had a guy got scammed for $34,000 worth of Bitcoin using my page, bro. Wow. And I'm like, when have I ever talked about, and it was one of my friends, too. I was like, when have I ever talked about Bitcoin that you fell for it? It's like, I've never talked about Bitcoin. Before. And and what is, why, and why and I guess, why wouldn't he have, like, reached out to you? And, and like, at was. least got a vocal, <laughs> you know, you know, Wolf saying, oh, yeah, man, yeah. that 34, yeah, I got you, bro. Put it, you know what I'm saying? You would have known his voice. Like, you you really just going to go off a of text? Stupid. That's wild to me. Wild I'm sorry, I'm not trying to shit on No, you, I, I, I was saying. shitting on him. I was like, dude, like, I'm, I don't feel bad for you. Like, I mean, <laughs> it sucks, right? But it's like, bro, like, how you, how you get scammed by a fake page, bro? Come hey. on, you know, dudes get get hit with that every single time. Like I got people like, "Hey man, I was I almost sent you money for you to play my song on the radio, bro." But <laughs> you know, like, Jesus bro, come on, Christ, man. I ain't never bro. gonna charge you for that shit. RC, what were, what were you gonna oh, say, bro? No, shit. I was just gonna say the thing about Twitter removing the block button. I didn't think about it how, how in the way that you were saying it. Um, I was just thinking about it from the standpoint that like social, the whole thing about social media that makes it great is that you can kind of curate your own like timeline yeah. to look like how you want it to look. Yeah. Um, I'm sure if we all pull out our, inst- everybody doesn't have Twitter here, but our Instagrams, if we scroll, each one of our pages are going to look different because of what we've liked and yeah. locked in the, over time. So I just feel like Twitter removing that function kind of cuts down on that, especially in a time where we're seeing so many ads and so yeah. many unsolicited things. Mm. So that just makes me less excited to go on Twitter if I can't, curate my timeline to vaguely look how I want it to look. So a a little caveat to that, because for example, for ads, right? Or even even on TikTok. So, because, you know, so a little little segment to that. Um, I think you make a very fair point about curating because, for example, a lot of men that are addicted to porn it's because they scroll online and they see all these naked women, especially at TikTok. They just like serve you ass all day, right? Yeah, yeah. One thing I noticed that you can do on TikTok is you can select that 
I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. You know, so like that, the algorithm will, will stop showing you that kind of stuff. And I think also on Instagram, if you have a lot of like fake pages or whatever that are following you or DMing and stuff, you can do like you can restrict mm -hmm. that page from commenting yeah. on your page. So I think, you know, I don't know how it's going to play out, but in my opinion, um, I'm kind of like in between of it. I think the, the alternative should be that he should be able to make it easier to restrict like bot pages, right? you know, and then also be able to curate your your ads, right? Like, for example, if you don't want to see this ad again, you know, you you, you select a feature in this as like, I don't want to see this ad again. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that kind of stuff. I think I think that, that's something that he could do to like make it more. Um, I don't know. Like yeah, user, user, more, user, yeah, friendly. user friendly, and, and they might be doing something along those lines. I would imagine, but when I just see that headline, we're moving the block button. I'm just like, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've been doesn't in, make me want to run to the app. True, I've All been my in exes this. can't block me no more. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! I just, <laughs> I just been in a situation where I I, I was <laughs> like, and I kind of talked about this before, but I've been in a situation where I was legitimately being like stalked by a very strange, weird Dude, actually, person. Me too, bro. What the fuck? And um. <laughs> That's why I feel like it's the block button at some extent is necessary. Okay, now, you know, do yeah. I think that people maybe overuse the block button because maybe they just their arguments suck and they can't defend their own point of view and then somebody's cooking them and they're like, oh, I got to hit the block button because I'm getting my ass cooked. Well, yeah, then that's that's I don't necessarily agree with that. But I think it is necessary to have that option because I've been basically put to the point where somebody was consistently making new accounts just to fuck with me That's just crazy. to follow me just yeah, but how can you block that though <laughs> well on on instagram it says block this account and any new accounts this person makes mm -hmm. so Wait, what if that person uses a new email well i mean they it's can there. but a lot of the times it's that it's once you do something like that and they really feel like they can't even like you're not popping up anymore True. they might even really think that oh maybe he deleted i did have a blackmailer yeah, really? damn, really. <laughs> Dude, it's crazy, bro. So dick I had pics a black or what? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you said what? <laughs> what? I said dick pics or what? Well, actually, funny enough, I don't even know if I should say this live. If or, you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, okay. I mean, I, I, I guess at this point, if it is, if it is out there, it's out there. But I get so my phone got hacked, oh, and that doesn't count. What? No, I mean it's like yeah, it's not. Dude, they phone. send me my own nudes. Damn. Whoa. He was twerking. And and they and so, <laughs> Yeah, I was spreading yeah. my cheeks wide. <laughs> and so they they what? They they threatened to like send them somewhere? Yeah, they were saying like we're gonna send them to your to your coworkers, to your girlfriend. And I was like, oh, go ahead. Uh to like <laughs> She already has them. Yeah, pretty much. Like, yeah. Is, um, isn't that similar to what happened to Jello a little bit? Or not not quite. <laughs> no, that's a little bit different with Jello. But Jello was black I don't want to see he was blackmailed or something had we we know people that's been in that situation to where they've yeah. had their personal information leaked. It's fucking scary, bro. Fuck so what, what was the resolution? So I made a police report, and then I was trying. I was like, kind of not gonna lie, I was kind of scared, you know. So they were asking me like, "Oh, you got to do this." Like, so I, I would. This guy sounds stupid. <laughs> I'm kind of ashamed to say this, but I was making more content for them because I was afraid. I was like, "Fuck, what if they send?" Oh <laughs> damn! So I damn. was like. I was like reluctantly, like I was with a teardrop. I was like, yeah, sure. Like sending more pictures and stuff. I was like, fuck. I was I was so stuck in that little like loop. I was like, what do I do? And then I real and then I, I confessed to my girlfriend. It's like, okay, look, I have a blackmailer. It's like, why the fuck didn't you tell me earlier? It's like, I don't know. It's like, have them fucking leak it. If if they leak it, like you might just get more business. And then once I thought about it, I, I was like, once there I thought about it, I was like, mm, you know what? Sure. You know you why not? Because it look, if my nudes get leaked. I'm sure I can figure out a way to figure out like who, who released it, and if it didn't, mm -hmm. then look, yeah. Kim Kardashian. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. went hey. viral. You know, it doesn't Billy. have to be the so, worst thing that happens. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? So, sure. like at that point, I accepted it. So, like you know, and I look like Jake Paul. So I'm sure there's gonna be some fetishes out there. There you go. There you go. You know? Hit the horn, should we? <laughs> Wait, <laughs> the power of positivity. Hey, I just realized something. I realized something. You know, I I haven't ever like told the whole story, right? Chewy, you can just like bleep it out, right? If I say something crazy. Like, you can just go, like, bloop. Okay, I'm going to just tell bloop. you what it was, all right? Because oh, y'all were about, not. About a boy that sent you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm excited I'm now, boy. Let's wait, wait, go. Wait, wait, wait. Gibby, open the door, bro. We have, we have to let him in the steam now. Right? <laughs> so, so, open, open the door a little bit. Look, yeah, so, right so bro, so this this dude, like, 
he had been following me. I don't know if he followed me from It was a dude? It was a dude, yeah. I, I don't feel... I, I'm, I, I mean, get a lot of gay guys to, in again, my again, DMs, dude. Maybe, maybe I'll be too hung up on double standards. I just don't feel like women do this type of shit to this level. Facts. I think it's more of it's... If you were to look at the statistics, this is something that men do. But it was a dude. And um, basically, <laughs> just... He followed me, I think, from a TikTok live or something like that. Because, you know, I go live on TikTok. Sometimes I'd have like 200 people on there. And sometimes they'd be wild in the comments. I could just be sitting there, bro. They could be saying crazy shit like stand up, spin around, like put it on Uh, the screen. Cake it up. Hey, yo. (laughs) Hey, yo. (laughs) They do. Am I I lying? No, no, you're not lying. So I got some stories myself. (laughs) Like nightmares, bro. But this is where it gets this is where it gets crazy. Right. So they start trying to like send me pictures. But they'll like make a new account and then they'll like they were like sending me shit from like new accounts. And so I wouldn't know who the account was and I would like open it and be like, oh, what the fuck is this? But it was the It'd same like, picture of the same <clears throat> like person. They were no, sending so, you dicks. So it would be like, this is where you gotta get ready for maybe bleeps and shit. Uh-oh. But they would well, this is probably not that bad. They were sending me like dicks and like bent over the crazy shit like that. Like and then, but, but then but then this is what it was coming with though. And this is what made me un super, super like like otherwise I'd just be like, okay, well this shit is wild. Like I don't want to see this. You know what I'm saying? I'ma just avoid it. But this is when it was getting weird was they would be saying shit like that. But then they'd be like, and when I see you, if I catch you, I'm gonna slit your fucking throat. Oh, and, I'm fuck? and I'm gonna and and I can't and I just wanna watch your blood like pour like they were saying shit like that. What the so fuck? they were sending Patrick me weird Damon? shit like that like yeah. pictures That's like that Patrick Gaiman. with like this freaky shit <laughs> but it gets worse bro it gets bro. worse and this is where and this is where I finally had enough I'm and so I had invested. to tell him straight up like okay. what the deal was was I didn't get any of these messages for a minute but then all of a sudden I commented on just a random post somewhere and then this uh person was like commenting under like commented under my comment on a post and was like was like you better be watching over your shoulder blah 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 like if i see you i'm gonna you know like i can't wait to just slit your throat and like shit down your throat like crazy shit like that who are you meeting bro it's people on tiktok you gotta Uh, think if i if if in a single tiktok if i have ten thousand people pop in and out like one of them's gotta be crazy bro one of them's gotta be crazy and then so this is the final this is the final thing where you got to get ready for the little bleep bleeps because I definitely well, know on, you man. can't say this. Shit. Rur, rur, My bad, bro. You know I got to. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought the final was the final. I got to tell the story how you know. I got to tell the story how you tell the story. You know what I'm saying? It's a safe space. Yeah. So so this was this was and this was when it got crazy, bro. Like that. So after that little thing, I blocked that person, and then some girl followed me. And like the the page looked pretty legit, and then they followed me, and then she said some random shit, like some like, oh look at my like look at my dog, they be they're so funny, bro. The the picture that they sent me, bro, like oh my god, what was it? What was it? What was it? What was it? it? Describe it, bro. Detail. The picture that they sent me, I click it and open it, and it's a (laughs) right, like a whole. (laughs) <laughs> with the whole <laughs> bro. Hey, yo, man. bro well I'm saying he's gonna bleak he's gonna hey and you know what's crazy Wolf? No. crazy bro you know what's crazy the Wolf? audience is gonna they're gonna be wondering what did he just bro. say that, yo oh my I, God. I need to go take a shower <laughs> I need to go take a shower after what oh, what was bro what? and so <laughs> we won this, this and it's so it. funny Wolf, because you're laughing uh, but like uh, like bro uh, dead ass dead ass at damn, first what? bro at first at first I was like <laughs> oh that's disturbing <laughs> bro I was like what the fuck like this is the craziest is shit I've ever seen in my disturbing. life and then literally I just messaged him back and I and and all I said was I'm always strapped and I'm always ready and I was like, if you see me, I'm about to turn I was like, I was like, if you, if, I was like, if you see me, it's the last day. And then like, and I, and I was like, and I'm not fucking playing with you. Like I'm ready. And, and I said, and I'm ready to die. Ooh, sorry. Ooh. <laughs> Shit. Yo, that is but, but so, so And then when I tried to go tell it to my brother, right. Cause I needed to like get this off yeah. my chest. Ooh, I get, and I was like, like and bro. And I said, and once I, once it came out of my mouth and I was like, and he sent me a picture of a. Of <laughs> oh my god! They sent me a picture of a 
<laughs> Artie, I'm never gonna be on your TikTok. <laughs> I want that nothing is. to do with you. <laughs> <I'm a laughs> <shit. I'm> a <laughs> I want nothing to do with you and I whoever. Really, and I started you. crying, I really, laughing, I really, bro. <laughs> Chewy, I really hate to sick. put more work on you, but I I feel like this story is almost even more compelling with the bleeps, like like with everything bleeped out, so they don't so they they don't know what we're talking about. Because, bro, what the actual fuck are we talking about? Wait, here? wait, wait. Was That's it like, crazy. Was it like? Was it like? Guys, I I have to hit the eject button right Talk now. Talk about hey, yo. <laughs> my question Jesus was, what a way to, my question uh, was, did they, did they, did they? Uh, <laughs> no, I think they probably like put the napkin on and like. Crazy. You know, this reminds me of uh, throwing up. Wait, wait, wait. This reminds me of one time back in Spain, dude. I had I had we had a dog I didn't have a dog. My neighbor had a had a German shepherd and our 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 house was was pretty open. You know, we all of our neighbors we would just like get together and so we had a bunch of different trees and shit. We had a prune tree. You know, like oh, prunes like yeah. make you like yes, shit, yeah. Yeah. right? So this fucking dog broke into the house, or like well, they didn't break in, like the garage was open, or like the <laughs> gate was open. So he br- he came in, started eating all the prunes and shit. Oh damn! And like later, he came back in and took a ma- like I'm not joking, <laughs> oh. this big, bro. Damn. And it, it looked yeah. like a croissant, not croissant, like a you know those those hey, like a, like this uh, cinnamon bro, roll. Yeah, 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 it was like this, and you could see the the little pellets of like the the seeds of like the, a funnel. Oh, like, yeah. And I was like. When I saw that, I was like, what is that? It's like, it's so big and so dark. And it's like, Bro. what? It- I'm sorry, Aaron. I'm sorry, that's Aaron. Cr- I just that's wanted crazy. a podcast. I, I think I'm I laughing. I wanted just to <laughs> talk <laughs> about music. Hey, I'm glad you was, was able to get it. the biggest shit I've ever Bro, seen in my life. I needed life. to tell y'all that because I keep bringing it up. And uh, I just was like, you know well, what? Wolf is here. I feel safe. Yeah, that was you so to, funny. We're going we're gonna to start a Patreon just so people can pay us to get the unbelievable. Bro, you should. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. That was so funny. That's the best idea you've ever had in your life. We got to talk more. Like, you should have a segment of like horror stories because I got plenty. Well, maybe we'll maybe that's to be the kickoff point for our Patreon episode thirty-one. Right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I don't know if I'm laughing because it's like a defense mechanism, but bro, that shit. If you need a hug, man, bro, um, I'm scared. I don't know. Hey, real quick, <laughs> I don't know if I want to be close to anyone anymore. <laughs> oh my gosh, we gave people a platform. Already um, needs a group hug. <laughs> hey, uh, yo! Thank y'all for watching us. Like oh, I said, God. this is uh, this started off great. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know how we got here, but uh, yo, we appreciate everybody's been watching. Yo, find this episode on Spotify, find us on Apple Podcasts, find us on YouTube. Um, yeah, man. Uh, RC, how can they find you, bro? Yeah, Calvert Productions. Hit me up on IG. Artie, how can they find you? Hey, you can find me Artie Reeps, A R D Y R E A P Z. But if you find me. Noah, he's then ready. I'm ready. Ready to die. I'm ready. ready. 50 cent over I'm here. Ready. Uh, find my boy uh, Gibby, the guy who did our, our, our uh, photos from last episode. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? In house photographer. For, you know, we love working with all of our uh, content creators. Well, find my boy at Gibby underscore visions. There you go on Instagram. Uh, Chewy, how can I find you, big dog? Jesus Christ on Instagram. Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ. Crust, like crust. pizza crust. Oh. But with a K, like Dude, crusty crust. Right Jesus now, with a G. I got pizza or wait, No, no, no. Is it Jesus? Yeah, it'll be on the screen, but okay. yeah. if you guys really want to spell it out. Jesus. <laughs> I said a Jesus. Jesus. And then it's like it's like if Kanye went to the Krusty Krab, Jesus. and then they made him his own meal, the Jesus Crust. Pretty much, yeah. Mm. There you go. Jesus Crust. Nice. Okay. Wolf, how can I find you, big dog? I mean, after AJ's story, I don't even want to find me, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, you can find me at WolfDSD, W-U-L-F-D-S-D. Domingo, Sábado, Domingo. Mm. Hey, okay. Nice. Domingo, Sábado, Domingo. Hey, hey wait, what does it stand for? I can't tell you. I would have to kill you. Oh. Mm. Mm. Dirty Sprite, dog. Dirty Sprite. <laughs> Dirty Sprite, dog. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Do- what you're going to need. Doing shit daily. Uh, and you're going to need ooh. death insurance. That's actually pretty good. Yeah, doing doing shit daily. Yeah. I might have to change that, yeah. Yeah. See, I got you. And follow me at DJ Aaron Michael, man, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat. And unless you follow Artie on TikTok, fuck away from me. All right. <laughs> yeah. anyway, mom, I'm sorry about this episode. Episode 31. Yo, subscribe. Subscribe. subscribe to the YouTube. Hit the mm-hmm. little ding, ding, ding. Hit the notification, man. Follow us. Follow us on IG. We love y'all. Episode 31. We are out. Subscribe. Oh.